Testament and come up with the same kind of unprepared child of God. So Jesus was like, oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass by me. I will now, you know, I know what kind of you but it's that. You know what he was talking about? He was talking about the crucifixion. Jesus did not want to die. Which means the whole story of Jesus being born and knowing he was going to die was a lie. Because if Jesus was born the Son of God and knew he was born to die, he would not have said, Oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. He would not have ran when they were trying to catch him. You follow if he knew this from birth, why was he afraid? What did he mean by, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If God's plan was for his son to come down and die for our sins, his son would have been a willing sacrifice, something they stole out of Abraham's story in Isaac. But his son Jesus, if you read the Bible, did not want to die. Like the Pope. <laughs> now, why Jesus didn't want to go back to his father? They said that he fell in the garden and he sweated blood. Homeboy was really gone. <laughs> I want to see one of y'all people there bend down and pray and sweat some blood. You know how hard homeboy had to be praying to change sweat into blood? <laughs> time. This is reality time. And this may not sound or sit right with your fancy, but until you can prove it otherwise, then you're going to have to deal with it. Until it shakes that spell of ignorance that is making us hate each other all over the world. And we the people, we're supposed to do something about the people that rule us that don't have all their marbles. Whether they rule us from the pulpit or Congress, wherever, we got to check them out. And we've got to get to the point where I please don't get angry at me where you're doing what I'm doing to people and you tell me that's ahead of time. Don't get angry with me because I'm not a believer. Don't get angry because I'm not spooked out. Give me some soft, concrete answers. When I finish talking for a little while, I will ask that brother right there to step up and sit over there so I can take that seat and I'll let any one of y'all who want to come up here who say you Jesus or say you uh, Muhammad and you want to get up there and talk to us so we can ask you some questions, you can have this here. But don't get mad because every time I ask questions, people get mad at me because I go directly at you. I don't hold no punches because I'm dealing with the one thing that anybody or nobody can tell with. And that's my soul. That's all I've got left. They ain't took it In paradise, on the right or the left, or beneath or up, wherever, next to God, I am going to question you. Because I'm not going to spend the last days of my life sitting in a church or a mosque or synagogue humming with your ass to die and find out it ain't true. I want to know ahead of time. And if you can't prove it to me, don't be angry because I'm not a believer. And if you want to say, I'll go to hell and hell, I'll go to hell. But I'm not going to no ignorant heaven. And to add to that, if the kind of people like Mother Teresa, the Pope, and the religious men I met in the Islamic world, if they ain't heaven, I don't want to be there. I don't want to go to a place where you sit down forever and do absolutely nothing. I don't want a couch with rivers flowing beneath it. With angels running around feeding me. I don't want to do that forever. I'd rather struggle on, on earth trying to get a job than to sit in a tree in a playground and do nothing but look at flowers all day. <laughs> you can do that in the same sound. The nearest I've ever seen on earth to the heaven is in the same sound. Where a bunch of people are sitting around in the day room with clean clothes and nothing to do. <laughs> They are promising you when you die, you are going from insanity 
into an insane asylum where God will be with you, and that makes it okay. <laughs> well, I'm not that kind of fellow. So that's why I sit back and I look at this and say, well, let me go on and talk about this. And if the Reverend can defend himself, I'm with him. If he can't, he gets mad, he just has to scratch his ass and get glad. <laughs> Because he's confused. <laughs> to, put, to keep some, some oil in his cap back. He ain't doing it to me. Alright, you understand? Right, let's do it now. And the woman <laughs> said to the serpent, What's he doing? She's talking to the snake. <laughs> if I was walking down the street talking to a snake, where would they put me? Things that make me go. <laughs> He said, now first of all, he's talking to her. This is women for you. We, and she includes us, she said, pull us in, add them somewhere in the trunk closet. We didn't know what the grace was doing. We just ate the grace and got drunk from us to him. That's what most of us men do. We don't know. Y'all got to forgive us. When women get together, they call us dumb. We dumb. And so, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. That's all. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not touch it, neither shall, you shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it, neither you shall die. Die. God told Adam and Eve, or Adam or Eve, or Eve and she incorporated Adam. <laughs> Don't touch this tree. All the other trees you can touch. This one here. Don't touch Adam or Eve. Or even if she incorporated Adam. <laughs> Don't touch this tree. All the other trees you can touch. This one here. Don't touch it. Because the day you touch it, you're going to die. die. The word here is mut in Hebrew. Dead. It's not our allegorical. Well, it's not spiritual. The Hebrew word is mut and means dead. <laughs> not, not, you know, like not fucking moving ever again. She's squeezing. <laughs> Adding the name of John, they add E-D like John on the end of it. Dead. <laughs> you got to be real. That's what it says. Dead. Now God said if you eat that stuff, I'm going to kill you. You got me? Now that's clear to me. <laughs> you wouldn't have to tell me that twice, not God. You don't have to tell me that once. I said, I got you. The serpent said, I said, who are you, man? <laughs> How do you get the balls to even question the big thing of the cheese? I want to know who you, who you. I wouldn't be questioning God. I would be questioning the serpent. Now one time in there, she's going to say, oh man, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Why he can't kill you? Why can't God kill the devil for introducing them to the fruit and introducing them to disobedience to God? Why is it that God can't kill the devil? Did you ever ask yourself that? Yes. You know why you don't ask yourself that? Why? Because that question walks hand in hand with the question is why is there evil on the planet? And if God didn't want all this corruption and evil and hate and racism, couldn't he? And shouldn't he? Just go poof and be gone and it just be the most loving, beautiful place? Why must the rose die? Why must the rose die? And why must it have a thorn? Why must I be deceived by nature when I see a rose? That's the first time. Oh, that's such a beautiful flower. And I love her so very much that I'd like to rip this beautiful flower. <laughs> rip this beautiful flower out the ground and kill it to give it to her and show her that I love her. <laughs> and so I reach down in my loving concern for her at the base of the rose and go, ouch. <laughs> Why must the 
tomato spoil. God thus know that the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as God's plural, knowing good and evil. So the means by which a person becomes God is for them to disobey God and inherit evil because they already had good but they were created in the image and after the likeness of God. So the only thing he could be talking about at this point is inheriting the evil side. So the way to become God is to become evil. That's what your Bible says. And I'll read it again for y'all who don't understand or overstand or in between stand what I'm saying. <laughs> Verse 4 of Genesis chapter 3 says, thank you very much, John. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Now the devil is not scared of God. Right? right. He's not scared of being that makes thunder and lightning, earthquakes and rainstorms and parasites and diseases. He said, you ain't going to die. He, he, there's a powerful individual here. But what God's power, would you? No. He do it. You ain't going to die. And then goes on. He says, for me, because. Because God does it's just said, because God knows that the day that you eat, <laughs> you're that, at that day, because that word then there, and in Hebrew, then your eyes shall be open. What does that mean? What does that mean? When Eve was walking in the garden and she saw the serpent, did she have her eyes open or closed? Okay. So, what does this mean? It means your spiritual eye. You see? And it's so colorful, it's so, it's so, it's so, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, they're so, so, so swampy, you know, so soupy to go, <laughs> but something evil. Your eyes shall be open and what? And you shall what? Be as God, knowing your good. Evil. And they confirm it further here. It says, Now the man has become like one of us to know good from evil. That's further down in the same chapter. And it's a further verses. These are cherubims talking. Now let's put man out of the garden. Because now he has become like one of us. What were those cherubims say? Were they good or evil? They were evil because man. And woman, according to them, who came in the image after the likeness of God. So they were already good. Who can be good than God? So what they did and what they inherited was a new attribute, evil. But in becoming evil, they became like God. Could you please explain that to me? Why are they trying to check my mind and talk behind my back? Why are they teaching me? A doctrine that contradicts logic and common sense and sound right reasoning. Why are they doing that to me? And why would they make you mad at me for pointing out at you to make you see it? That man's crazy. That man talks against the Bible. That man's antichrist. That man, why? How can they get you to do that when all I'm doing is reading to you what you've been reading all your life? And, I'm not, and you are helping me to see the interpretation. I didn't pre-write the interpretation. You're doing this right now. And if you can read this another way, then bring your daddy ass up here. You know? <laughs> because this is me. I'm reading the King James Version of the Bible. You understand? King James Version. A British Bible in America. You didn't get the drift. You should be American Bible in America. In America. All right. And a woman, oh, and, and, and when, check this, and when the woman saw that the tree, so now eyes open, now she see, that the tree was good for food, it was edible. No in here does it say apple. There's no apple in there. Somebody stuck apple in there. In Sunday school, apple got in there. Apples are not that old. There's over a thousand species of apples. What kind of apple was it? Was it a Mac? <laughs> 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 well, if you ask that question in church, 
the reverend will get mad at you. The Sunday school teacher will report it to your grandma because your grandma is the one who your ass about church. Your mother just tell you, stop acting up. But grandma just, come here. Bring that big old ass over here. <laughs> Christians will tell you that the Bible is not more than six 